Hello. In theory, that yeah, you that you 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 actually for, for like the first time ever, a timed countdown worked. In well, the I'm history not even on my stream, of any show. <laughs> um. Hey, welcome, welcome. The internet works. Oh, I should um, go to Twitch. Yeah, you should I probably should, be. Here. I should probably like be a part. Yeah, of Yeah, you know, it's just we run a show here. You know, we want everything to be ship shape. Um. Hey. Uh, internet died horribly last week. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're gonna be like, why is there like an extra hour in week two? Why is week two an hour late? Why is this stream called week two? Week two last week was cursed. Didn't really work properly. Internet died before the end of the last hour. Not ideal. Um, <coughs> took a long yep. time to fix as well. <laughs> I've had to spend last week coaxing Ollie out of his depression cave. Uh, it was. It, it was wasn't a depression. It, it was anxiety. They're it was a different. Depression, uh, and and it took many Legos. Um, I actually played Horizon Zero Dawn most of the time my internet was out because I never played it before, and it was it's just been wrapped on that shelf back there, and I'm like, oh, all right, that'll 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 be how I entertain myself, I guess, and uh, it's it's a good game. Um, but no, oh no. I'm gonna not touch oh, that. <laughs> um, but because you guys the are, are frozen, and I don't know how to fix it. Uh, really? Frozen. What do you mean frozen? Uh, no, I don't. End, don't end the call. Damn it! Thing looks fine. Oh uh, yeah, it's all fine. It's on the for screen. him. He's got I a problem. You're just you're just voices in the ether, for I That's can't fine. See. Oh, That's fine. Like, that doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. But you can't understand facial expression anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that face of like genuine <laughs> trouble. All right, cool, great. Uh, but yeah, we're basically just sort of gonna continue on from where we were last time because uh, if you actually watch back on YouTube, uh, you can probably see an embarrassing amount of time. I don't realize that these people have been frozen. Uh, <laughs> it, it might be like four minutes or something, <laughs> like a long time. Being like, all right, Jason, so you do that. This, this, uh, so what do you do? Jason, like, oh, for fuck's sake. Um, and uh, so we're going to continue. What happened last time is actually we, we started off with a combat and we never finished that combat. And we may be in the last couple of turns of that combat uh, where you were fighting a bunch of gang members on the planet of Halberd. There's, no, there's you, were, one... you were one person away from finishing the combat. Oh, yeah, I know there's one left. I thought, did I shoot them? No, oh, you them were like, no I'm going to shoot you. And they, they didn't. Take the threat. Um, no, I think I didn't. I shoot them nope. for like a small amount of damage. No, oh, they're damaged. Right. I, I rolled. She talk strength. Yeah, 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 yeah. You tried to intimidate them down. So the scene as it is, you, you tried to fight these uh, Frozen Stars gang members uh, who uh, you've been poking around in their business, and they don't like that. Uh, there were five of them. Most of them instantly just taken out by your gunplay. Uh, they were using knives. The only person who's really in injured in any degree right now is Davis, but we'll go over that later. Where we are right now is Davis, uh, Jason's turn. There is only one gang member left alive. They are knife in hand. They are between Tom and Davis, a couple of uh, meters away from Jason, who is behind cover. They were trying to get at Jason, but Tom psh, bapped him in the face and ruined that. So it was a big bat. It's um, actually Jason's turn, and we started out still in combat. Uh, in that case, I will surprise, surprise. I will aim with my pistol. Uh, <laughs> I'll aim to get plus one. I'll no. aim and then shoot. Uh, ah, there's two of us in melee with that person. Yeah, but what I said last time is that he's so close. He's essentially okay. uh, no because any debuffs this time with a standard pistol. If you try to use a rifle, and, and not so much. Uh, unfortunately, uh, yes. maybe it is because you were firing into close range with other people. You try to sort of aim even more for the head than necessary, perhaps. And Davis we've all done it in games. Target. You go uh, a little bit too far up. And then actually next up is the uh, gang member's turn, who is going to immediately roll a morale check because they're the last person alive and fail it. Horribly. That's that's what I was doing, you know. I didn't want to kill him. You just it was got the like bang. A warning shot. Yeah, 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 across the bow. Um, yeah. And so, what the whole combat last time essentially culminates in a situation where you have this warning shot 
Davis has the gun to the back of this girl's face, uh, head, back of her face. Um, and Tom is like there, probably ready to give another punch. And she just kind of like drops a knife. I actually think she actually already had dropped a knife. But now, after that gunshot in the air, the threat of the barrel of the gun against her neck fully connects and she kind of raises her hands up in a universal sign of surrender and uh, doesn't say anything. She's still sort of grimacing, but she uh, stops fighting. I pull the trigger to sever her spine and leave her quadriplegic, but alive. That's going to be a medicine check. Um, Not really. Oh my god. <laughs> She's just going to Batman it. No, I don't kill. <laughs> that's, um... But yeah, so you dark. are... Um, so the scene. You're in Hangar 11. You're actually across the hallway so, of your I, ship. I, I, I'll, I'll lean in the kind of whisper of wise choice. Mm. No, but, yeah. uh, Davis is the only one who's truly injured. Thomas is missing one HP, which for all intents and purposes is you're shaken. You're beating combat. You're not actually injured. Davis has like a little scratch. Not much more than that from you a trying to scratch? wrestle. A little scratch? He lost three HP. Yeah, but it, it, in Star's Right Number, it's not D&D &D where you get take horrible hits and then you just walk them off. In Star's Right Number, you take nearly no damage until you die. Oh, okay, fair enough. That's how it, it sort of works. So you got. I like, was like, a, isn't that 50% of his HP? But that, yeah, that's cool. He's not that injured, really. But you're only level one, so it's going to take quite a while to heal. You heal one uh, HP equal to your level each night when you sleep restfully. Um, but you have uh, a bunch of her gang members dead in this hangar, a ship that isn't even the ship you're looking for. And uh, that's about it, uh, actually. Oh, you also have Donnie, who yeah. kind of avoided all the combat and kind of stands back up. Pretty, pretty glad that the people he's decided to ally himself with are good at shooting. Um, but doesn't really say much. He just kind of has like a hand in his horrible black bitty beard. Could you remember who Donnie is? Donnie? He's a thug. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a sort of thug from this planet of Halberd, the, the, the pirate the planet. The one I was with, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. who you kind of convinced <laughs> to... Uh, you know what I'm enjoying? <laughs> because we're not on Scott's screen, he's just closed his eyes for like the last couple of minutes. He's trying he's to... He's just listening. <laughs> He's using the force. <laughs> it's like he's Daredevil. It's weird! <laughs> Sorry. I can't see you guys moving, so it's just weird to have ether voices, so I'm trying to imagine everything. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I get it, but it's funny. Who's and the I most beautiful it. in your imagination? I the mean, answer is actually only me. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, uh, I was going to say, Ian has the nicest voice, so, so I guess Ian... Mm. Ian does have a radio voice. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, it's a radio <laughs> face is an insult. A radio <laughs> voice <laughs> isn't a compliment. Radio. Um, <laughs> Terrible. So, yeah. you are holding... No, it's, it's going to be a little weird because, you know, the, the all the fuck-ups that have been happening recently in this show. Uh, you're holding her at gunpoint. What is your plan? Your ship is very close by. Uh, you do know that the gang that she's a part of, the Frozen Stars... They uh, wear blue, mostly, is how you can sort of show themselves. Uh, um, it does seem to at least control this star port, space port, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Um, I, I would um, turn to Jason and probably say, well, we probably don't want more of them coming after us as I like look around at the ground. And right now, if any of them see us, they probably will. Mm, you just um, kill four of them. Yeah, I'll I'll turn back to the the woman, and say, uh, "Why'd you attack us?" Because they were attacking um, Scott's character. They were attacking originally. Scott's character, and Davis. We, you. Yeah, we we don't know all the details yet. Essentially, right? Mm. All right. So I'd, yeah, I'd ask her, "Why why'd you attack? Why'd you guys attack?" I should have brought some truth serum. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, she's got her hands up still, and she kind of looks around. Her her eyes are still sort of lingering on the piles of her dead comrades. She's like, mm -hmm. it's a, orders, you're, you're poking around where you don't belong in business you don't belong in. I, this, this is what we meant to stop you. She doesn't have a lot to say. No, shaken, fair enough. Broken morale-wise. So that, uh, that 
ship that we're looking for. You know anything about that? Do you know anything about what we're poking around into, or were you just told to come in? I have no idea who you are or what you're doing. Well, surely we have killer. Come on. We have come to find a, a ship that seems to be missing from your logs. That happens to often. <laughs> Pirates don't like logs being kept of where they're going and where they're throwing. I imagine it happens less often than ships being kept on your logs. So let's try to find out if we can narrow this a little bit. And then I'll bring her over to the console that I wanted to have like tapped into uh, before <laughs> and see if she can like unlock so it. So you're going to take what? Well, that would be taking her back upstairs where you off there would be more people. No, there was another console down here, but I was, I, I, I instead of uh, approaching it, I hopped and hid. There right, was so a, I, there were crates it, it you were examining. Yeah, there were crates that were. Which had essentially. There, there, were, there were crates I was checking, but then there was also, because I was checking to look for like the insignia or yeah, whatever yeah. it was of the ship. But there was also a console down here too. I thought that I could have one of them approach. I mean, there would be, there would be a console down here that would connect to the to network. There would be no reason why there wouldn't be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and uh, it was one of those, I shouldn't be the one connected to the console. We should have Jason connected to it because he's way better at that stuff. So what do you want to do on this console? Um, so we were trying to find out the information that disappeared, um, mm -hmm. that was deleted or whatever. I saw like the, the, more or less the fact that something was missing before. So I, yes. I was hoping that the local terminal would have a bit more information than the one upstairs that just kind of like handles mm. everything. And so have Jason kind of log in and see if he can get more details because A is better than me and B it's the local terminal. Of course, this will be a, uh, I don't remember what it's called. It's a hacking so, check. I think it's program. Yeah, program. So I'd say to uh, to Jason, I'd be like, uh, Jason, this is the, the reason why we head to this hangar is because this is where uh, the ship that disappeared from the logs was uh, was it was uh, docked. If you can hack into the terminal and sorry, if you can get into the terminal and see if you can find any more information about it when it was here and so on and so forth, and maybe <clears throat> and I'll kind of like uh, tap her with the side of the gun. Because I imagine I still haven't lowered it yet. Because why would I? Yeah, of course. You, you're I'll tap keeping her, like, the, the side of the gun, the side of the neck. Be like, and maybe someone would be willing to assist you. Well, I can give it a try. Uh, you will actually have a plus two because when she you say that, she's like ah, uh, and she kind of like taps in like a password essentially, uh, very quickly, which you can tell. Essentially, th these are like public access terminals which you could you could check everything, but uh, all of that. Yeah, oh, wow. 14? That's real freaking good. Um, you <laughs> actually uh, very quickly types in the password, which means you don't have to cut through firewalls or anything like that. You don't have to go through any kind of security. You just have to find the right data. Now, exactly as Davis already told you, uh, the record of the Pascal, which is the ship you're looking for, has been scrubbed from the system. But not incredibly cleanly they probably have some sort of program that just like, okay, gone. Uh, what was that? I just realized I had notes of everything that we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I you do said that. Pascal, I, I was like, why does this sound familiar? I, I do that. Down. I'm like, oh, I've got notes for everything. I do that pretty often too. Because <laughs> um, my notes are paper notes, so it's like, where the fuck did I leave them <laughs> as well? Um, uh, and the, but they probably have some sort of program that basically goes, Okay, all the data about this ship, everything, like the people on it, da, da 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 gone. And these ship logs aren't as detailed as they would be on any other planet. They are basically just the ship. It's not even why they're necessarily there. If anything happened in the dock, like maintenance or refitting of something or even like cargo loading, then yeah, that is on there. But, um, like you probably check even uh, your ship just to be like, okay, this is how it would look. Um, but the Pascal isn't on there. Uh, you do see, you essentially follow the, 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 so you figure out that probably some sort of program or bot, pre-designed program, cut it away. You see who did that, who was logged in to, uh, basically chop the data away. Um, and that is someone named Samara, who, according to their identity on this device and on their system is the leader of this gang or at least someone very very high up and then you actually start thinking well if data was removed it's always still there data on digital devices cannot be removed that's not how it works it just gets replaced 
by something else. So, actually, because you rolled so incredibly high, the stars are outnumbered, that is incredibly high. That might even be a crit. No, it's just really good because I forget that Jason has a plus two intelligence because he's got freaking nerd brain. Uh, because you rolled so incredibly high, uh, actually give me another program check to even have a chance to try and reverse uh, the... To return the data. I wasn't even going to give you a chance, but you rolled a 14. And uh, that's real good. All right, let me get to my check thing. With that, you don't recover the entire data. Which, honestly, you didn't expect to be possible. Uh, but you do recover that the Pascal was here at the times the Merchant Guild information told you they would arrive. Yeah, uh, they didn't stay here very long, and then it basically, uh, they dumped their cargo, which is what they did. Your stand, their cargo is still here, so that's not a surprise. And it does basically show you their, uh, where they were intending to go, which is more into the asteroid belt of, that is around this planet. If you imagine Halberd is kind of like Pluto in our planet, where it's around more exoplanets and asteroids and things. Um, uh -huh. the, it's not a direct direction, it's essentially, you know, when, when these ships, very rarely is it just like, we're gonna go that way and do it instantly. No, even right now, your ship has all of the places it can go sort of programmed into it, and this is essentially that data. They are intending to go there next. Um, you're still gonna have to look around while you're there, but it is a huge step up from absolutely no information. Um, from where they went next. And uh, Jason didn't know anything about this area, but if you sell it to, say, Cormaz, <coughs> he'd say, there's not really any reason to be out there unless you're mining, and it wasn't a mining ship. Okay. It's not even really, like, mining stations. Really? Unless they, there might be, and you don't know about it. There are tiny mining stations every now and again. Out there and about. So, to recap, because... There's a lot of me trying to, like, sort of explain the logic of why things happened and getting confused in my own head. Because sci-fi, um, you, uh, reverse the shadow. So the ship's data is mostly there. Uh, it lines up with what you had before. They did come here to drop their cargo. Then they head off into a nearby, uh, nearby, nearby, into nearby asteroid it is space. probably near a boy. So, uh, I guess we gotta follow the trail into the asteroid belt. Maybe they meeting up with someone they shouldn't be? Seems like a pretty good place for that, really. Well, I suppose this planet's a pretty good place for that, to be honest. Mm hmm They must feel that they're in quite a lot of danger if they go to the length of being in an asteroid field, let alone this wayward planet. In danger? Uh, or... Maybe just things they want to hide. Either way. The, the woman is like, so you you seem to have got what you wanted. You can let me go, right? And kind of like tries to look at Davis, but doing so, of course, maybe like pushes the pistol like a little further into her neck, and so she stops. <clears throat> well, she she's got a pun. We got what we want. We can leave now straight away. I mean, I don't. I, she. We should probably tie her up and gag her. Someone can come and find her in a couple of hours after we've skedaddled. But I don't see any point in killing her. It's a waste of life. Oh, whoa. I don't think anybody was contemplating killing her. There's enough corpses over there to make a point. And I, you know, gesture across the room. Well, then. The real question is, are we going to go chasing this ship? As you like, I, I kind of want to be sly about this. I don't want anyone to see it except for the, the core group. But like, I look at Donnie and his thugs like they, they obviously want to come with us. <laughs> We're just kind of like, let's leave quick. So I, 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 I yeah. So yeah, I'm just like, you're going to need to do more of a run around if you want to get rid of Donnie. Your ship's like over there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of like, so so are we gonna leave right now should we go talk to the captain first like you know what i mean just kind of like trying to make it obvious that we have these people who we are should probably to talk to the captain because like i said 
if you're going to a clandestine meeting in an asteroid field that's near a pirate planet, you're probably well armed. Hmm. Well, the uh, mm. the magpie is not a battleship. I will also say from your logs of the ship that you from the Pascal that you got from the Merchant Guild, they weren't well armed. They were less armed than your ship. Not like well, not, not like horribly, but like your kind, your ship is has a bit more firepower than most ships your size. Perhaps I can go talk to the captain. I know I know the bar that he likes, and you guys can go wait at the ship. Donnie, do you want to come with me? Uh, yeah, I want to meet your captain. He and... at this point, like it, it, it's clear he was maybe still ready to fight, even though he didn't help you fight. Yeah, he didn't help time. fight at he, all. He was, like, holding on to what looks like sort of like some sort of melee weapon sheathed in, in his mm -hmm. belt. And he kind of puts his hand away and he's like, yeah, we can... I want to meet your Kevin. And walks over, puts a big greasy hand on the back of your, like, shirt. Probably already had grease on it. As long as it's not like... No, exactly. Neck, you, like, just clasps the back of the neck. And it's, like, it's like, one of the ones where it's, like, <laughs> it's close. It could just... Yeah. He's got big hands. Right, right. Uh, all right, well... Let's take your goons and go find the captain. You guys get the ship ready to leave in case the captain wants to go right away. Yeah, it's probably probably best to be quick about it. I mean, this gang are in control around here, right? If a few of their members, a few of their people don't come back, they're probably going to come looking for them. Exactly. Maybe we should put the bodies in the crates. At least a cursory inspection doesn't show it up instantly. There's a lot of blood. That's all right. I mean, I guess if you see blood but not bodies, it is, I guess that's like a different level of like spook. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Also, they don't know whose blood. That I is. mean, like you can like look through a room and maybe just like mm. it's a hangar, right? There's it also, yeah. If you were if you were looking from outside, around. maybe it looks like oil. I get what you're talking. Yeah. About. And if because it's fairly low caring. gravity here, it won't take you super long to do that to load up four right. bodies into these barrels. But you probably want to have someone strong, like dedicate a couple of minutes to that. All right. I'll uh. You guys, you guys me got that? Goons, we'll go, yeah, uh... Me and the goons got it. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah, you get that squad like uh, Tom has and the goons do. The goons will do it happily. They don't even like bat an eyebrow at the moral implications of this. You even notice Tom has that like they pocket like anything of value off these mm -hmm. people's bodies, which is not a surprise to you. Um, right. The rest of you go off to the ship. Um, I think I kind of want to go with uh, him to with Jason. Uh, Jason, sorry, Tomas, to see the captain. The, the captain's on the ship, by the way, Scott. Oh, the way, he is. He on? is doing a ruse to get <laughs> Donnie not oh, to come. Oh, because I actually, my apologies, my apologies, I missed that one. But no, I, yes, so Anna the, the and issue, the captain are on the ship still. The, the, the issue I have is that I was actually for taking them with us because we made that promise. As long as they assist us, they held good on their end. Why should we go back on ours? So, yeah, okay. So I, mean, I think. If you stick around, it will ruin the plan in a way that... But that, that's fine. That's your way of telling no, me. No, so instead of you walking off... Uh, sorry, sorry, instead of that, well, before you walk off, I'm going to look to you and be like, Tomas, um, we're still taking them with us, correct? I mean, that's up to the captain, isn't it? Man, I'm looking forward to seeing what the, uh, what the captain has to say. Hmm. And I'll give him a nod. Oh, sorry, just to interrupt, so in case Ollie mentions it, I am, uh, Rain has taken over guarding the woman who's still alive, because I don't intend to let her go away until we've... Oh, thank God. <laughs> with your bigger gun. We could yeah. just lock her in a crate with her friend's dead bodies. That's cruel. That's, that's but, but these crates are also filled with sand, so... Sand, yeah. yeah. You, oh, you, I take the no, sand, I'd be put very it on the tight. blood. I take the sand, put it on the blood. Okay. It's like no, when you no, drop no, something saying. in a liquor store and you put sawdust on it, it's like that. Yeah. <laughs> sweep it up, sweep it up, sweep it up. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, yeah, I mean, we can go check the bar, see if he's there, and uh, maybe, if not, he's still on the ship. Who knows? I, 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 like I said, I just give him the nod, and then I will clap the head back to the ship. All right. So what are you going to do with the girl, Rain? You're just going to sort of, like... I am, I mean, how, just, how, what's the distance between these two hangars? Is it like... So, I mean, a hangar is a pretty big space. Yeah. So, even, and, and then there's, it, pretty, pretty large, considerably, really, honestly. Mm -hmm. I'd say, I'd say, 
Um, so I was debating. <laughs> it's hard. I'm trying to. Have, I'm struggling to put it into like actual physical numbers. But well, it's, all, it, it's for sort of distance, but it's going to be a pain to take her over there, and we might get seen by someone. Yeah. Exactly, oh well, yeah. no. The indoor. So the space between the two. Actually, yeah. Um, so there's the space between the two hangars is public, uh, but mm -hmm. when you were going through there, you didn't see anyone else there. Uh, it seems like no one else is in the because there's three hangers on this floor um the other one isn't in use you didn't see anyone else there uh but well, yeah someone could risk. see you yeah so, it, it, um, public space I, I will i'm sure there is something i can use to truss her up with and in, in this hangar cables or something cable yeah. or something and just um find a bit of material somewhere st stuff it in her mouth give her a bit of a gag and then uh, then i will follow um a patch of shit cool just leave it here you know, I could have just given her a big dose of a uh, painkiller. Wouldn't that be a waste of your painkiller? It's part of my med kit. <laughs> Rain just, Rain just like. Well, I no, know. I got loads of it. <laughs> I mean, the, mm -hmm. the 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 cable and stuff was there. Might as well use it. No point in wasting your supplies. Or breaking <laughs> Hippocratic oaths. It wouldn't hurt her, probably. Probably. <laughs> well, I mean, unless she had a reaction. Rain, tie her up. in her sleep. Tie her up, knock her out. She could be a concern with me uh, when we're long gone from the station. I'm yes, a boss. Blunt trauma to the head won't. <laughs> <laughs> Smack you out. Yeah, all right. So at this point, Tom has Donnie and his two goons. It doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Do it again. I was considering making you roll for it, but I'm like, what if that happens? <laughs> I don't want that to happen. Knowing me, I would roll it. Exactly, exactly. exactly. It was Ian as well. Um, you got to hit her, but you actually hit yourself in the face instead. <laughs> so, Tom, as you're <laughs> trying to be, go to, like, this is the bar that your captain likes, where the so, hell are you taking? Yeah, but, like, about, about, like, I don't know, three minutes into a walk in a direction, I'll pull out, like, my, my, um, my like data slab type thing like uh oh like how we were communicating before mm -hmm. oh I, I guess the captain is on the ship huh oh well we might as well head back to the ship all right like he's i thought i thought he would be in the bar he fancies drink well every good man does yeah and he actually and... Kind of, like takes out a flask <laughs> nice um the rest well, of you can uh, head back to the ship a little bit in advance then, because you've got to get back up from elevators and all that sort of Wait stuff. till yeah, he gets yeah. Davis's contraband talk when he comes aboard. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we get back to the ship before he does, correct? Yeah, yeah. like, awesome. you probably so, got five, ten minutes, yeah, maybe. Yeah, something really quick. So, so we can approach the captain, so obviously we go all the way back aboard the ship with the chicks knocked out, thrown back there somewhere with some mm -hmm. corpses, and, um, and we go back to the ship. No, it's just, yeah, uh, when you do, uh, it's actually Anna, who is your pilot, uh, who probably notices you first. Because she was kind of hanging around in the hangar bay with her big gun out, <laughs> just just in case. Uh, and then she's like, Davis, you're bleeding. Kind of like, yep. So, uh, Captain. Upstairs. Thanks. Um, if... Uh... If Tomas gets back here before uh, I return from speaking to the captain, uh, lock the door with some lame excuse. Just stall him. When we go by, I'm going to be like, you know what it's like with women. Uh, uh, go up, speak to the captain. Yeah, when you do, the captain's not even in his quarters. He's just sort of in the bridge, uh, not really doing anything of note, honestly. Uh, it seems like he's listening to stuff from the comms panel with, like, Jason's headphones. He's like, watching right YouTube. I was considering that. It's just cat videos. It's he's, just cat videos. <laughs> he's not right now. He's actually, you see, probably listening to like the radio chatter in the area, but again, like, not to any effect. When he sees you, he's like, you're bleeding. Yep. So, Captain, we have a small situation. Uh, for one, the ship that we're looking for isn't here. And uh, beyond that, the logs of the ship we were looking for have been removed. We were able to, of course, discover which hangar the ship was docked in and then hack into the terminal and get significantly more information. And I'll allow Jason to explain that. But before we do so, 
we have Tomaz right now is on a bit of a roundabout with a crew of three that offered to give us aid and upheld their end of the bargain in exchange for transportation off of this rock. Really? Is there any chance you'd be interested in upholding our end of the bargain, which is transportation off of the rock? You go ahead and put me in one sticky situation. I don't really want anyone from this godforsaken planet on my ship. And I'll be honest about that, but if you made a deal, a man's <coughs> honor's only as good as the deals they keep. With Sir, respect. They didn't, they didn't have... I'm sorry. I, I, I looked at the communications officer. With respect, he didn't necessarily say any stipulations. We can strip them of their weapons and keep them in the cargo bay. Comfortable, but not overly so. It's exactly the point I was about to make, sir. I think that's the least we should at least stipulate. I mean, I don't want no pirate on my ship with a gun or anything like that. And if they're happy to just be passengers, then that's all they can be. They simply ask for off this rock. You can drop them off the first location we have between here and where we're headed. And if they cause any trouble, we can drop them off before. I don't think we're going to have to worry about them causing any trouble. And I say, uh, uh, you know, it's one of those like attentions obviously going over to her. <laughs> Rain's just like standing there, like b p polishing the end of a gun or something. <laughs> gun. All right. Yeah. Uh, comfy up some space in the cargo bay. We've done it before. Right away. Uh, one more detail before um, uh, I take care of that, sir. Yep. There are three dead. Four. Oh, sorry. There are four dead. Uh, a fifth we've knocked out and left behind. We didn't want to raise suspicion. Who was trying to stop you? Someone was trying to stop you get, you know, the information, I assume. Frozen so, Stars. The gang. The local criminal organization. Oh, so they weren't, they weren't Lunans or anything like that, or aliens or something? Just, Not as far as we were able to understand. Just crazy pirate people. I, I don't, people I don't give a shit, rule, then. Who rule this, uh, this, this part of this rock? When you go to Halberd, lads, sometimes you gotta kill a few pirates. It just happens, you know. They know it happens, we know it happens. Uh, I wouldn't let it weigh heavily on your conscience. And, uh, just a reason to leave quite quickly, so, uh, Anna, get up here, warm up the engines, we wanna spin off and go. Uh, Jason, I'm gonna leave you to... Uh, debrief the captain with the details that we procured along the way. I'm gonna go and take care of the cargo base so we can get up as soon as possible. And I'll turn to the uh, I'll turn to the captain, and say, <laughs> yes, sir, and then I'll turn and walk off the shit at the other bridge. Hey, wait up! I'll give you a hand with setting that up. At least I, I give an appreciative nod, like from like you know half turn yeah. back. And I imagine Jason waits until like the pilots in the room and starts giving <laughs> the details. And... Uh, no, he would. I mean, he would give some details. He'd be like. Yeah, it was deleted. <clears throat> by it's more than where to go. Simple program. It's it's in an asteroid. He doesn't go for like any any like techno babble or anything like that. Well, you have more than just asteroid belt. You have like rough locations. Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, that's the thing. I um, but I would also say that I speculate it's fishy because it's in a pirate pirate controlled area, asteroid belt, and that we should be careful. He, 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 he takes in all the inform information. He's clearly thinking about, like, the plan of what to go ahead, and maybe even starts writing some stuff on his console. Um, the plan it. Um, it could be good for Lunan ships to be in an asteroid field. If their defense plating or technology is greater than ours, then asteroids might not affect them the same way that it does the magpie. I mean, it's very unlikely. I mean, you probably spend most of your life planet side. Asteroids rarely hit the side of ships and send them exploding like they do in the movies. <laughs> injured people don't tend to say injured in space. It's true. And uh, he's starting to formulate a plan while uh, Anna starts warming up the ship. You start, you know, the ship has like cots for like makeshift beds for if you have to take on passengers or medical refugees or medical something. emergencies or like yeah exactly the the magpie is very much one of those ships that like follows like the code of like if you see a distress beacon and it's not suspicious then they will try and help people um 
Uh, and, and to answer your question, Ardent is the name of this area of space. So it's a region? Why. Yeah. Um, like a cluster? Yeah, I, I can't remember what I had it before. I think it was like called Ardent Cluster before I retooled it for Stars Without Number. Um, but this cool ass like, like nebula. In the, in the Milky Way galaxy? Who knows? I don't know a galaxy of it all! No, no ah! exactly! That's ah! the whole point. Did you listen to episode that's why one? There's no point calling it Ardent System, because that's you're not leaving Ardent. It's also not systems are a different thing. Um, yeah. We don't have records of, of no. all of humanity's mapping of the stars. No, always. you literally don't. This was the episode one. <laughs> but but like but like we have the ability to read stars. You don't have yeah. Like, stars one oh one. So back in the you days are of where Earth, you are. You stars. don't know if that's where the the Milky Way. They don't have no idea of that. Telescopes haven't I, actually been reinvented. No, I described this before. The, Snickers, the, na I mean? the navigation on the... So, this area of space was colonized by an arc ship. The navigation systems on it worked, but were broken. So when everyone was awoken from cryostasis, they had no reference to where they are. If they're in a galaxy, it might be the Milky Way. It might not be. They wouldn't know what it is very well because of things going wrong in the ship and whatnot. That's why Hashtag they don't know where Snickers Earth is. Galaxy. That's that's it. Really, Snickers? That's like the worst galaxy. It's I Snickers are pretty I, sad. I agree. No, Snickers are great. Galaxy, galaxy. Snickers are like I'll eat a Snickers, but like it's not my go-to. No. -uh. Uh, hashtag I Twix. Twix is yeah, the I gold like Twix, standard. But but Twix is like not a good name for a galaxy. No. It's, uh, it's, it's a good name for like an alien. Twix. Yeah, yeah, like the Twix if alien. We're, if we're playing Star Wars, Twix right. is my next character I, name. No, 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 I want no. a twerking Twix alien. Like the twerk. All right. So I think I think someone can animate Scott. Into wait, wait, Scott, are you trying to twerk? No, I, we I'm, don't know. I'm, we can't I'm, see I'm below. Sitting, so it's more of like a booty shift as opposed to like actually twerking. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? You want to see me actually twerk? I can just like. No, don't uh, stop it. Stop uh, it. Uh, You're gonna look like Rick from. Oh, sorry, Morty from Rick and Morty. I, I don't watch that show, so... I don't Really? Either, You're so I'm smart. Eating. I thought you'd like it. Anyway, uh, Anna starts warming up the ship. At this point, Tomaz comes back, and uh, I imagine Davis would have, on the compad, be like, You're, they're allowed in. Uh, so, when you do come in and open up the hangar bay doors, they see that there's this little space being prepared for them. It's not like you actually finish preparing it in like the seven minutes or so it took. And also Davis like is like, man, I need to eat a banana to heal. So uh, convenient you had bananas on the ship, which bananas is actually probably make do happy. have bananas on the ship, uh, but they're probably not that great quality. Uh, yeah, but they're also rationed. Yeah, exactly. You don't just get to eat as many bananas as you want. This is this um, is Davis's daily banana. Yeah. You get exactly. to go above and beyond your banana ration when you get shot. <laughs> Tomas, Tomas has diverticulitis, so I get to have his half of the banana too. No. Mm -hmm. Tomas likes bananas. <laughs> no, you have <laughs> that would fine. give you. That would. That would mean you have to cut out your intestines, man. It's fine. I don't know <laughs> why that got it. me. So I think it's, it's just an important character trait. It's the, it's about you're, yeah. you're allowed a third of banana a week, man. That's not safe. Uh, That's uh, safe. I eat them anyway. It's like right. me. It's like us and pizza. Oh, Scott. We know we're not meant to have pizza, but we have it. Did I, mm. did I tell you guys the story of my friend's friend who's allergic to peanuts but loves Snickers? So once a year, he prepares a full day where he does nothing and he just lays in bed and very slowly eats a Snickers as he swells up. <laughs> Snickers aren't worth it, man. They aren't worth that! Doesn't, it, doesn't the reaction get worse every yeah, time? Yeah, but that's why he eats it very slowly over, like, the course of a day. <laughs> I'm, I'm, wow. I'm sorry, but, like, a, just oh, a good old-fashioned crunchy peanut butter and, you know, preserved sandwich is I'm way a, more worth I'm it. Why do you say that instead that of, like, peanut butter? kill him really way more. more. Hmm? That might be way worse for him than a Snickers bar. Eating He's got a system butter? for Snickers, at least, you know? Yeah, eating peanut I mean, butter might I, kill I, him. I, 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 however Worth ridiculous it. that is, you've got to respect the dedication. I, that's exactly my thought <laughs> yeah, process. I, there I, with, like, I, don't, I don't respect that side. dedication. I, I don't respect it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the difference between a British person and an American person. I <laughs> respect <laughs> dedication. I don't respect that dedication. I agree. So, when Donnie and his two goons walk into the ship, they're like, uh, a little confused. 
Uh, Donny kind of looks over and like, you don't have a ship like this. Don't have room for more people. You're gonna be sleeping in here like animals. Well, more like refugees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He kind of like puts his hands on his hips, walks around a bit, and like, all right. So you you're heading into this asteroid field, do this job, and then you're gonna send me back off to Pike after that, right? That's gonna be how we're gonna do it, right? That's the plan. Uh, the part captain of that, will... however, Captain has stipulated that um, both you and your friends must relinquish all weapons or contraband items. Thomas holds his hands up. I mean, what do you uh, qualify as a weapon? What do you qualify as contraband? <laughs> you know, like... If that's going to be the question you respond with, we'll have you strip. I don't think you or I want to go through that. Uh, you, you know, give them their pistols, go, and they, they hand over their pistols, which are kind of like fairly shoddy revolvers. They do the yeah. job. I, um, I look at um, his, like, um, belt line and go, ahem. <clears throat> Because I know he has that melee weapon. Uh, this is a this is a flashlight. Still, still hold his hand out like. It's, a, it's for lighting like dark tunnels and things. Well, it's not that dark in here, is it? <clears throat> we'll let you keep the alcohol if you comply. If not, that will be. No loud alcohol on this gun air ship. God, I'm like, out Ray, Rain standing nearby with a rifle. <laughs> yeah, I, I was assuming there was a little. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, he takes it out, and actually, when he uh, puts it in your hand, Tom, it's, it's a fairly big, like cleaver. Uh, oh, clearly, with some sort of like technology inset in it. Uh, when you actually examine it for, for, for a bit, because you're the techie guy, you actually if it, it's a cleaver that's designed to like cook meat while cutting it. It's not ah, perfect. I would not keep that above my dick. Uh, like no, why? It, it's good. It'll cauterize the wounds. It's a pretty, it's a pretty, pretty hefty weapon. Um, <laughs> if you keep nice. hold of it, it counts as like a medium-sized melee weapon. Um, oh boy! And uh, he he's kind of kind of grumpy, and and uh, the the other two quite diligently like go through their their pouches, and they take out like maybe a couple of like uh, narcotics and things like that, and but uh, anything that they figure would be contraband, although one of you does have to explain what contraband means. Not that what sort of like what it is contraband, like they just don't know what the word means. Yeah, I just contraband, don't want to get yeah, it. Like, like, rain, rain also listens in to work out what contraband is. <laughs> it's a big her word. Rain sneaks back to her room <laughs> like, I gotta hide this shit. <laughs> contraband it's simply means high. something that we deem illegal or illicit. Yeah, I just don't want to get in, like high or massively drunk. In yeah, the, yeah, in they the hand over what, like, they've got, you know, recreational drugs and things like that. Though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they Probably all get things they do. Way. Actually, I'm, Thomas I'm, sees a lot of the things they looted, and they hand back over. I, so. I look over all the items, and with the exception of one item, which I'll store in my brain, um, I say to him, I, I say to them, and you'll receive all this when you uh, touch feet in the next location. There's no reason for us to keep this for you, uh, keep this on. Uh, There's one fair. small caveat. We do not know where or when it is that you're going to be off of the ship. The captain said <laughs> that he will uh, find the next location for you when he sees fit. That could be in five hours. That could be in five months. It's whenever it is that we touch down. In the meanwhile, I'm sure your comfort, your your stay will be comfortable. Good day to you. Donny like sits down on one of the, like the cots quite heavily and starts sort of like crossing his arms and like fidgeting a bit clearly already uncomfortable in the situation especially when the ship actually starts moving uh when the ship starts moving uh and like the anti-gravity and stuff starts properly setting in uh he and the others are visibly sort of spooked as any of you who remembers the first time you've been in a, a ship taking off uh it's an experience uh, and they uh, are going through it their first time, which is kind of, you know... We can't punch with these guys. <sighs> Just occurred to me, you can't punch drive without... You're going to have to, like, tie them down. Yeah. Uh, but you don't need to punch for a while, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't need to punch um, between systems. I mean, we can. We can say, let's get them there alive. <laughs> <laughs> Bad things will happen to them. But it's not, like, it doesn't physically damage you. Uh, I'll be back like, with your inoculations damage. tomorrow. Uh, please do give me a buzz if you need anything. And he motions to like a 
a, a, like a panel in the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this point, like they're like, what is what an inoculate? What is that? And like they're talking amongst themselves. <laughs> and by that, where them talking amongst themselves <laughs> is Donnie talking at the other two, who don't really say much. Um, they murmur, nod. They nod. They nod, and sometimes like shift their head or like motion with their hands. They don't say a lot. Um, and with that, you uh, start flying off towards the asteroid belt. Uh, when you are clear of Halberd, uh, clear of its orbit and its gravity and things, um, the captain calls you all in to the bridge and uh, says, you shall uh, strap down. Honestly, I think when we start getting near this location, he kind of like has it up, up on, um, Anna would have it up on one of her screens, essentially sort of like a 3D bubble in space in this asteroid belt of like this is <coughs> sort of the area we're going to look uh when we get over there we're gonna go into gray alert that means we're gonna put your vac suits on we're gonna scrap strap down anything could go wrong strapping Deal- in for punch not for punch just okay. for in case we get shot so it's like means i gotta stay at my station and put your vac suits on before we uh get too close are we bringing them with us for this task, or are we going to drop them off beforehand? I don't really think I want to waste time flying all the way back over to Pike. That's what we're <coughs> going to take. Uh, it kind of looks over to Anna, and she kind of like shrugs and is like, at least two days. I'm like, I don't really want to waste two days. So. Very well, sir. And I'll go over and take my station. And he kind of like mumbles to like to, to, to Rain, who is like the person to his left. I'd be like, and honestly, if, you know, we do get shot and all the oxygen vents out, I don't really care about the pirates in the cargo bay. <laughs> well, I think if it gets shot and the vents out, that, yeah, ain't nothing left for us to worry about anyway. Exactly. See, this is why you get this ship. And uh, he comforts uh, down. He, When you fly closer, he does press a few buttons. It turns the ship into gray alert, which essentially means uh, preparing for combat. Not that you're necessarily in combat, but in sort of ship combat in a small ship like this, any random stray shot could vent all your oxygen out. So you put on your vac suits. All of you have vac suits. Um, so you do so. Uh, vac suits are not as clean as they would be, perhaps if you've seen in the Mass Effect series, where it's like, oh, everyone always have. No, you're literally in like chunky spacesuits. Uh, it actually does make operating your. Um, uh, are they chunky, man? Yeah. Um, they they do make operating your stations a little more awkward, but not enough that it actually causes you any sort of uh, like debuff. Armored or vac suit. No. Not armored vac suit, it's just a regular yeah, yeah, vac suit. I mean, it basically I mean. just, you have oxygen for X amount of time. We'll look it up if it ends up becoming relevant, but it probably won't. I, I, um, I'm just going to look it up now. for Because um, it might mean that we don't benefit from armor. That's fine. Oh, yeah, but you are taking your armor off to put these on. Mm-hmm. Usually. Hey. If you wanted to do the otherwise, you can. Uh, right. But you would, you'd need to sort of get a special... Equipped, equipped with area. radios to have a 10 kilometer range. <coughs> Oxygen tank weighs one encumbrance. Uh, included with the weight of the suit and functions for six hours. Back suits are cumbersome and apply minus two penalty to all hit rolls and skill checks that require movement. Mm-hmm. At least a month of zero G experience can ignore this penalty. No armor can be worn with the back suit, though the suit itself grants an AC 13 to its wearer. A back suit requires one type A power cell for each 12 hours of operation. Well, for Never right stop. now, you're plugged into the ship. So yeah, I wouldn't worry cool. about that. Because um, you don't have them. Um, but you're plugged into the ship essentially. Like, this is a, something that any small ship would does. Uh, in in any smart small ship does in combat operations because space sucks and mm-hmm. you can't guarantee gravity oxygen I'm attached to the wall like one of those vacuums that that plug in at your house you know what I'm talking about <laughs> like the hose that comes from your wall in your house and vacuums yep. things up you ever see those before <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I don't get why you said that though like I'm, um, I'm plugged into the wall. Like I'm oh plugged. yeah, yeah, yeah. Plugged into the wall, essentially. Um, yeah. Sorry, that for some reason that brain like just did not connect. Vac suits weigh two encumbrance. 
while we're wearing them, just. Yeah. Well, usually uh, in Stars Without Number, uh, anything that you wear on your body, armor and stuff like that, the encumbrance is reduced by a certain amount while you're wearing it. Yeah, I think it is just encumbrance one uh, for when you're wearing okay. it. But cool. again, don't really super worry about that now because you're still in cool. ship. If, cool, if, cool. if the ship explodes and you're stranded in space and that's relevant, <coughs> then that's relevant. Um, but that's right what now, I'm worrying about, you know. You know, good to worry about it, medical officer, just in case. So I have a woven body ar body armor, which Burr, is uh, armor. which is combat armor. I imagine that also cannot go underneath the uh, the suit, no. correct? Because that would be either a armored vac suit or b armored undersuit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Gotcha. And just a quick question, uh, Ollie, just to be sure for the future. Mm -hmm. um, I don't wear armor, and my AC is sixteen. Your sixteen uh, applies above. Okay. Just making yeah. sure. You're still wearing something that is armored. But you're just a tough guy to, to hurt. Right. Just making sure. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and actually, after a delicious little segment of discussing rules and <laughs> logic, uh, we're actually going to take a quick break before you get to uh, the scanning zone. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, we'll be back in around five minutes. Uh, stay hydrated in the heat, you animals. Arr. 